Life Adventurers, welcome to the journey in Nepal. The journey in Nepal, one journey, a hell of a journey inward and outside, 21 days surrounded by big mountains, beautiful people, and a lot of connection that you're creating together and at the same time, a lot of meaning. My name is Oscar, and I'm very happy to have you joining here. I'll also be your life guide along the journey, which means physically and mentally. But before we continue sharing my story, let me introduce to you our video. The universe favors the brave. Ha, <laughs> isn't this amazing? We are all somehow heading in the direction towards the light, which we once visualized as a crystal clear image, but they became hazy along the way. And not knowing what's really in front of us or how to get to the mountaintop makes us doubt ourselves and eventually we end up turning around halfway. We may have our own journey to venture, using our own light to lighten our path, but it doesn't mean we have to do everything by ourselves. Imagine if we could just share these lights, share our inner worlds, our hands to help, depart for the journey as an individual and return as part of a fellowship, molded through our cries, frustrations, tempers, toughness, empathy and sympathy, and latter, where the binding material is vulnerability and love, helping us reconnect with ourselves again, our fellow humans and our Mother Earth. And all we can do is just trust life. But isn't this really the beauty of it? Because eventually, what is of the destination if it hasn't been a well of journey? Holy shit! You don't have to be fearless, because no one really is. But be courageous, and act regardless of it anyway. Yes, this has been a beautiful video. Let's see if we can continue. No, we have to go back. Okay, we're just gonna stay here. Sorry for the hassle. So basically we're gonna start off now. My name is Oscar, as I explained before. I'm just gonna explain very quickly what we're doing to today, basically through this presentation, which is guiding you through the steps, the journey itself, who am I, what is a never ending journey, and then obviously the journey in Nepal in this case. And I've already in, put in some Q and A's that, I, that we had before, which basically means I think we're tackling a lot of those. But if there's still any questions, obviously you can always get back to me and then we'll tap into that. Let's go, jump, jump. Who am I? I'm not really a big deal. Um, I'm just a regular guy but I've done the traveling. I've, I've been visiting a lot of places here in Europe, but also just being out there. So by sharing this, this whatever you see come across here, meeting the Dalai Lama, getting lost in Mongolia, getting to sleep with people, driving a motorbike in Mongolia, but also reindeer. I've actually summited my first mountain in 2018, which was above 6,000 meters passing crevasses with the ladders and everything. And well, the, the list continues. The reason why I'm sharing this is because I know it always is super important that people have a good feeling with the people they go with or the person, the team, whatever. So I hope this convinces you in any way, but I'm sure that throughout this whole process, this, this one hour more or less that I'll be dedicating, you'll definitely get more of an idea of myself, who I am, and the energy that I'm bringing with it. Um, a life guide, what I mean by a life guide, I'm guiding you physically, but also mentally, emotionally, spiritually through this journey of 21 days. You're in good hands. 
I promise I've done the necessary work and courses, but besides that, I'm more a big fan of life itself. Here we go. If you think I'm only serious by this list, like this must be a tough guy, I'm lots of fun, but you'll see in the next video. You think it's hot, Oscar? Yeah, so I hope this gave you a better impression of who I am as a person. I'm just a lot of fun. I'm very human. As you can see, it's a, most likely you're running into me dancing after dinner, lunch because of the sugar rush and having a lot of fun and also joking around and at the same time, making sure you're in the best hands possible. So basically, what is a never ending journey? At the same time, I'm also the founder of a never ending journey, but not the only one by now. So that's a good thing. But what I noticed through all my traveling, or 13 months of traveling, living half a year in, in South America, half a year in Spain, traveling through Europe many months, uh, being on a journey of 13 months straight, traveling through Asia and the big list that I showed you before. There are a few things that I always came across. And one of them is really seeing that despite where we come from, our religions, the problems we deal with, the language we speak, uh, that we have a few things in common. And obviously our first and primary thing is emotion. Besides that, we're all on this same journey through life. And this is something I wanted people to become more aware of, that we're so much more connected than we think, so much more. Even if it's because we're searching for identity, for meaning, there's so many ways, but somehow we have gotten into this idea that we have to do everything by ourselves. So obviously we from a never ending journey don't believe that, we think that we're in this adventure called life together. So everything is aimed at either connecting with yourself, connecting with each other, or your environment, nature, everything surrounding. So we can eventually gain responsibility for who we are as a person. No longer figuring life out by ourselves. Everything is mentioned. Here we go. Guys, where are we? We are in heaven. <laughs> what the hell? We need a little fun. Oh, so same. Puna basic game brother. Look at the 360. Gaan we een rondje draaien? Zeker. Ja, zeker. What the fuck, Mati? Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. 
Yeah, so these were just some videos. Actually, the the second one, the first one was on arrival. The second one was halfway our trek when we got to Annapuna Base Camp, which is at the altitude of 4,142 meters. These are kind of like the highest peaks in the Netherlands. It's, or sorry, in the Netherlands, in Europe, and you're not even halfway. So it, it's super interesting to witness. Um, Anyway, let's move on. The journey in Nepal is divided among three phases. The first one, as mentioned before, is the pre-journey, the journey itself, 21 days, and there's a post-journey. I'll tap into the, in the upcoming slides, we will discuss the pre-journey, journey, and post-journey phases. The pre-journey phase. So what can you expect now in the upcoming slides, the images that I illustrate and the things I talk about? is the gear workshop, guidance through the process, the physical preparation, the gathering. Gathering means bringing the people together online or live and the possibility to do any fundraising. So at first, the gear workshop. I'm trying to go as quickly as possible because I just wanna keep it practical so you get a little bit more about the practical stuff because I can go on forever. So here we go, what to bring. So I know that there's many questions always regarding, especially these kind of trips, which are quite big trips, uh, regarding what people should take, what should they bring, how should you dress, whatever, uh, how many kilometers are we walking, uh, what shoes do we need, what clothing, which, which clothing is the most important or not, these kind of things. So eventually I want to guide you through this process and I will be hosting the gear workshop. There will always be an online version or let's say a live version where you can be present and then you can always tune in online so you can witness it live so basically what can you expect at the gear workshop things about how to layer what kind of materials do you have that you could bring what kind of jackets are most important uh, what kind of shoes what socks should you bring how many of what should you bring because a bag, obviously, you can stuff it up, but is it that you need everything? But it, because eventually you'll have to carry the kilos and you want to limit that as much as possible. So we'll be guiding you through this whole packing the bags, uh, what to bring, what materials to choose from, what jackets, literally everything, how to dress, as I mentioned before. So we'll work on the layering system. So before you go, you have a clear idea at, this is what I really need. This is what's most important. This is what less importance of less importance in terms of quality, those kind of stuff. So obviously you'll get a gear list. It will tell you exactly how many pairs of socks to bring, how many shoes, how many, uh, let's say t-shirts, those kind of stuff to give you a proper idea of what you could bring, including obviously a guidance, a process uh, in what backpack to bring, what size, how big should it be, how to pack this bag, what kind of bag should you go for, right? There's so many questions and we get that. So the gear workshop will provide you all the answers and also on the spot, if there's any questions left, we're there to help you out. Priorities and qualities in items. What I mean by that is that sometimes a few items and I'll say, these are very important that you get of good quality and others are a bit of less importance of good quality. So either if it's during that day or in a blog post or in an email, you'll get a proper idea of like, okay, this is the, the highest quality, this is moderate and this is budget. Is it that important? I would, for instance, I could say uh, of less importance could be the type of shorts. Uh, or maybe the socks or type of t-shirt that you're wearing. But I could also say like get good quality shoes or maybe a jacket, those kind of stuff. So everything will get clear along this way. Online or live workshop, as I mentioned before, we'll be hosting it in, a, in an outdoor store. So you'll be surrounded by everything that exists from top A quality to a bit more budget stuff. And also during the night, you could even shop with discount uh, at these places. So there's a lot of options 
to try to see how things fit, if it is something for you, yes or no. As I mentioned before, discounts on many brands, many people actually, when they went on the trips, they bought quite a lot of stuff from these shops, brands, where they get discounts. And there's an adventurous package. I can't say too much because it really depends on, uh, as we still have seven months to go, more or less, on what, how the adventures package will look like. But as you can see up top here, this is the adventures package of Forest Lands, which included a day pack from Nomad. They look beautiful. We had the t-shirt, the Life is Life, which I'm wearing right here as well. Uh, there was a steel mug involved. You would a journal. There was, um, what else? Uh, food for along the track. There was an, even a letter and a very small note. So it looked amazing. So this concerning the gear workshop, which will take place approximately two months earlier. Yay, the gear workshop. I think it got a clear, you got a clear idea of how it works. The people were there present, so we would just do everything together. It was a beautiful experience to see how suddenly the first people were dressing up with the jackets and it was actually the first time putting on some real outdoor gear, something like it, um, but it's fun. It's really fun. Guidance, uh, the pre-journey phase, guidance. So things you need to arrange, everything that comes before it. So think of visa, insurance, flights, uh, the guidance maybe through other processes, what could you tell your work? Um, if you need any recommendations in terms of letters that you can write to your employer to see if they can maybe pay for it partly because this happens as well as you would definitely come back as a better person, let's say, better person, I don't like the word, but I think you get what I mean. So in this whole process, we'll guide you. So also, um, things that are important to get and everything arranged within that. Things you need to know about the country and the people. So obviously before that, we'll also start to warm you up in terms of meals to really get you a good impression of where we're going, the areas we're visiting, the people we're meeting and the places we're volunteering and where we're going in terms of tracking. And, and in this pre-journey phase, we'll also have a call with the, the tracking agency, our friends, but also with the volunteering. If you decide to do any fundraising and volunteering, we'll be involved as well. Here we go, going quite fast, I like it. Physical preparation. Another thing that, that you will get is the physical preparation because this will be the longest you, will, you can walk for now in a never ending journey in terms of all the journeys that have been set out, this is the longest. Um, so we're gonna tell you a little bit more about what levels it required for you to walk. Is it, could you just do it with regular walking? Do you need more than that? What exercise can you do at home with what stuff? If you have it at home, yes or no. Uh, but also at the gym, what can you do of exercise at the gym and outside because as you may imagine walking uh, in the mountains with your foot kind of never really balanced and stable and wearing it back and going up and down is very much of a different, let's say movement that you're used to even in the gym. So for sure you will be using different muscles but you can get used to that. So even your muscles get strong but also your ligaments they get used to this uh, intensity. So we're gonna prepare you physically. Fundraising, there's an option for fundraising. Um, we're supporting kids. One of the poorest uh, in the region, Bhaktapur, and Bhaktapur is close to Kathmandu. It's a bit on the outskirts and it's a public school, uh, which we will be providing food and school utilities. This is not normal in Nepal to get this. 
why and who are we supporting? First of all, who Feed Nepal, which is ran by uh, women in general, getting a lot of opposition from the men, which gives actually more drive, more reason to, to really focus on them. Uh, what else? Yeah, so basically in terms of the, the, the food and everything that we provided, I was there. And you'll see it in the next video. It's just insane that they went to this public school where they never had any, let's say, uh, food. So you could really see it in the attendance rate, which was severely dropping eventually by donations, by support programs. They went from nothing to cookies to chow chow, the instant noodles to rice and eggs as lunch. And this really influenced um, the attendance rate at school, which is a beautiful thing. We're gonna help you set up. We're gonna have a call with the, with the NGO, with the ladies as well to get you going, to get the vibe like, hey, what's going on there? How can we help? They'll explain a little bit more and then we can tap into possibilities and way of to do the, ways of doing the fundraising. Check out the next video. This guy, the, the guy on, in the end was hilarious, really. Um, but as you can see, it's normally they go dressed up with the same clothes and in the same uniform. But if there's no money, there's no, it doesn't have any priority to buy a school uniform. And as, as you could hear in the video is that the lady, Ayusha, uh, she mentioned that they haven't eaten that day still. So this was their first meal. And we came there around like one, two o'clock. Like, come on, we started eating at six, seven, eight. So it was, a, it was a tough one, but it was beautiful to see. We go, the track, the journey. So the main phase, the 21 days where the magic happens, what to expect. So I'm now going to explain you something about the track, accommodation, the volunteering, uh, as an activity, learning the language and meeting friends and the personal growth program. So here we go. The track. There's so much to share, um, but I'm trying to keep it brief in a way. First of all, it's a 10 day track, which means you would be walking nine days in this case, because there will be one rest day. And this rest day, we, uh, we inserted it later during the journeys because we saw that people could really use kind of like a break. Normally you would walk for six hours a day, more or less, between 15 and 25 Ks, uh, which doesn't sound as much, but there's a lot of up and going down. As I mentioned here, I see Nepali flat, a little bit up, a little bit down, that's what they say. Uh, we're most likely combining Annapurna Basecamp track with Mardi Himal track. Annapurna Basecamp track gets you up till 4,132, which is the most beautiful night sky that I've seen. It's definitely in my top three for sure. Um, and then Mardi Himal brings you up till 4,500. So this is the highest point you will be reaching. In this process, it's a lot of up and then going down. So sometimes we drop 300 meters only to cross a river and climb up, let's say another 300 meters again. So this is basically how it can go up in the mountains. Um, if I talk about difficulty of the track, I believe it's something that can be done. I've done a lot of tracks. I've done Anapurna, Mardi Hima twice. I've climbed up till 
6,200 meters. I've done my Nasalu track, which well, I climbed up to 5,300 something. And I've done Everest Base Camp track, which got me, got me up to 5,400. And then I did my first summit at 6,000, nearly 200 meters. So it was quite a thing. So I know, I know the deal. And the deal is really get your mindset straight and you'll, you'll be able to do it. It will be challenging. It always will be. Also still mentally. I think more mentally than physically. But we make the physical part also mental. Um, but I'm sure you can do it, especially with the proper preparation. It is something I know you can do. So please keep that in mind that with the proper preparation, it will be challenging, but it's doable. I've had people with vertigo, with um, vertigo, what's the other thing? Asthma with chronic fatigue syndrome. So there's a bit of everything, but I, if this one, if you put this one in your favor, you'll get through that. But I'm making sure that this will be the case and you'll never be alone. There's enough people to help you during this track. There's a guide, either Kumar or Krishna, who's coming with us. And I'm so, so, so looking forward for them to join us. I hope to get there, but if it's one, it's also a good thing. Um, another thing, doing the track, you, there is showers, especially at the first camps, um, and there's possibilities to wash your clothes. So what we normally do is we, we use the dirty clothes, we wash them, socks and clothes, we wash them, we take them off, we wash them, we let them dry overnight inside, and then the next day we hang, if they're still not dry, we hang them on our backpacks or on the sides, and then it dries during the day. So that's how you can kind of recycle and reuse everything that you're using. Good system. Um, the food. Yeah, so normally it works like this. You get at a tea house where you're staying. You get dinner there. You sleep there and you have breakfast. And then we move on to the next spot. And somewhere in between, you would be having your lunch at beautiful tea houses, which they will be shown later in the videos to give an impression and I can share a little bit more about that. Um, and also about the accommodation, which will be up next. To get an impression here, as you can see, left right corner, uh, sorry, left right corner, <laughs> the left top corner, that's uh, the view from Annapurna Base Camp going down, the center one on top, is Annapurna base camp going up the last part. The other one next to that one on your right is the valley that you look through that we came from. The other one is a typical picture where we're all just lined up having a, a tiny break, which you will have along the way to have a sip of water, those kind of stuff. And these things really depend on the group. So the rhythm of the group, if someone needs a break, we stop, we have a drink and then we continue walking. On the left corner, you can, below, you can see um, a typical tea house where we're just having food being served. So there's nothing you really have to take unless you're a big fan of sneakers and chocolate and those kind of things. Yes, you should bring that. But also along the way, you can buy these items. But obviously, the more you go up, the more expensive they get. The one in the middle is uh, from a village very close to where we were staying. I mean, <laughs> look at the view, it's insane. This is a 7,000 meter mountain, crazy. And here's the group down there on the right bottom corner. Uh, we had our friends joining on the trek. Beautiful experience to have some locals with us and we had so much laughs, but this is something you'll find also along the videos that are coming and you've seen them already on the videos. Here we go. Oh, 
Namaste. I'm putting it to a pause here very quickly. This is the valley that we came from, actually. We were on the way up. So as you can see here, there's a clear line. Or where you come from, more or less. This could be the view where you're having lunch. Like, come on, it's insane. And the local food is very good and very nutritious. Um, as you can see here, there's people walking with a lot of bags. These are called, these people are called porters. Obviously, they carry your name, but in for this role, they're called porters. And what porters basically do, they carry the bags of people or maybe items up to the mountains. So sometimes this is for locals if they need supplies, but they also help tourists, trekkers to bring their bags up if they want to have a more light experience, let's say. Um, we're carrying our own bags. It's for the full experience to see what it means if we carry emotional weight, but also physical weight and what is really necessary. So this is one of the reasons uh, why we carry our own bags, which will most likely be around 12 kg, 10 when we do the trekking. Here you can see a typical place where we have to really, really climb. So this could be typical steps, um, but this is not the average. This is like the more one of the steepest steps that we would get along the way. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm just pausing it for a sec because I think this is a beautiful moment. This was the last day of our trek. Um, and because we have this good connections, we were able to camp at one of the places, which normally doesn't happen. But we were so lucky to, to meet these beautiful people and here in the middle, he's watching me right now, is Krishna and he was our guide, but he's such a dear friend to, to me and, and to the people who came now. So as you can see, this was a beautiful moment how we closed off the trek with a bonfire, with drinks, with music, with fun. Ah, I can't wait, really. <laughs> Okay, so the accommodation, we're staying in hostels. So during what's not the track, we're staying in hostels. One of the hostels is located in the, the most, I think the most popular area to stay in. It's called Tamel in Kathmandu. And they have proper beds. So we're staying in bunk beds. We're having most likely the rooms for ourselves. Uh, so just with the group, because I believe it truly adds to the experience to be in the same place to share laughs because you're, you're with someone else, to share the conversations and to really create this connection together. So um, we'll do the same in Pokhara, which is the second one. Of, I think it's the second biggest city, but definitely the most, the second most popular uh, city to leave from when you go trekking. And Pokhara is beautiful. It's way more beautiful than Kathmandu, I think because it's surrounded, there's a lake in the middle and you're surrounded by mountains. Pokhara is really my favorite place. Uh, obviously the hostels, they have everything you really need. They look proper. 
um, where they're not shabby stuff. We're staying at, at, at good provided accommodations, well provided, sorry. Tea house is doing the track. So there's no camping involved. Many people think like when you go to Nepal, you're bringing your tents and everything, but actually many tracks in Nepal are already that established that you don't need to bring your tents anymore unless you go on expeditions or through, uh, through a very, 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 very remote area, but it would definitely not suit the goal, the purpose of this journey and this track in particular. So you're staying in tea houses, very basic, simple houses, as you saw before in the picture with windows. Normally you would be staying with one other person in a room. So bring your earplugs for sure. And normally there's uh, blankets provided. If a little bit lower, there's also one shower or maybe two, very basic, obviously everything, but it works. So it's more practically, practically oriented when we hit the mountains. Here we go. Meeting friends. Yeah, so this is, I think it's an important factor. The reason why we put this in is because normally when you go on a kind of like a group travel, it's so organized that all you are with is kind of like the group that you go there. But because I've been in Nepal five months and I've been traveling over two, three years in total in my life, for me, it was so important to immerse, to immerse, to get to know people. We're not there as tourists, we're there as travelers, as life adventures, because we want to connect. So I'm gonna introduce to you my, uh, my friends that I have at the monastery, the English teachers, the people who own bars, the people who own hostels, uh, or they work at certain places, which when I always showed up, they would be very happy and have good conversations. So it's all about the people. I'll be bringing you to local places to eat and everything that's included there. So you get like the most genuine taste of Nepal. Yeah, meeting friends here, you can see it. I mean, there's Babu on a left, right corner with my camera, left, right corner, <laughs> left, top left corner. And then there's Nawang in the middle, our teacher Nawang also at Remco, just having fun. The group again, Deepak below on the right side, uh, hugging Kim and Deepak is the owner of the tracking agency, but he's more a friend. So we decided to come together like, hey, can we do this with you? And he said, of course, Dai, come, come. Let me show you. And then he said, come on, we do gezellig, gezellig. Beautiful people, like literally everywhere where we came. And one of the factors that I think I didn't include in the presentation is we're learning the language. We're going to dedicate one day meeting or learning the language and during the night we're just going to have fun. So you know the basics of the language. So at least you can say, thank you. Uh, how are you? My name is, this is my age, those kind of stuff to really show this effort of wanting to connect with the with other people. Let's see what next, volunteering. Yes, one of the main activities obviously is volunteering. Um, what can you expect? Forget this list, by the way, I can see it, it's, not, um, it's not updated, but volunteering, as you can see from the, uh, the, the picture on top, that wall, that it's a school actually. So we went to the school and we brought paint. So we painted the school, the mountains weren't there. Uh, we did fundraising, so they had money to give. We actually, we donated, we had someone donating toothbrushes. So we showed them how to brush their teeth properly, those kind of stuff. And we brought all of this together and, and closed off kind of like our journey with the sense of meaning, of purpose, of identifying our meanings or reinventing our meanings but you can see doing this together, we're surrounded by locals. I mean, ah, this experience, it gives me goosebumps now. It's, it has been so, so magical to see the kids and to be able to, to do something for them. So yeah, there's volunteering included and obviously the possibility to do any fundraising. Here you can see the group again. Yeah, what can I say? As you can see, the school here was yellow at first, and then we painted this beautiful colors with the mountains. Here's the logo, by the way. 
we didn't manage to do everything in one day because we arrived quite late um, and things went a little bit different than planned. But I mean, we also built a swing where they could just swing around and we had those stepping stones The I don't know how you call them, that we painted on the ground. It's been a beautiful experience, really. And this year, obviously, we're going to include it. We're going to be of meaning. This is going to change your life, I'm for sure. Yeah, so obviously the most important part that we shouldn't forget is the personal growth program. There's a reason obviously why we call it the journey inward and outside because it's all, everything is reflected on the outside, but it starts with understanding ourselves, the journey inward. So in order to get there, to, to create a sense of responsibility, to, to gain a greater understanding of who you are, how you can bring meaning to your life, but also how you can kind of direct course and how you can create your life. We're having these six phases of the journey. And the first phase is called get out of the way. The second one is called get out of your own way. The third one, find your way. The fourth one, create your way. The fifth one is all the way from taking action. And the sixth one is make way. So we'll start off with the first one, get out of the way. This is basically identifying your move towards and move away. I'm going to keep it brief, but we have moments that we think like, ah, oh, I want, I don't want to be with these people anymore. Ah, oh, I would love to be there to this place. I want to surround myself in a different environment. I want to change. I want things to be different. But normally we, we feel it, but we don't know where it comes from and which aspects and areas and factors influence this. So how can we identify all these different factors in your life and how can we put them on the balance of move towards and move away your external environment? Which brings us to the second phase, get out of your own way, which means making an honest assessment about yourself in your life. Where do you stand now? What do you think about your life right now? What do you think about you as a person? Do you have any beliefs that are not contributing or others that do? Creating an honest assessment. This is the most important part because as soon as we know this, we start to understand our landscape and the way we function and work. And sometimes when we don't function. So after that, it brings us to find your way. And find your way for me means recalibrating your inner compass, recalibrating direction in life according to your life values. Who do you want to be? What do you stand for? Because it's, there's a beautiful quote from Alice in Wonderland when she gets to the Cheshire cat. And she asks the cat, uh, tell me which way do I ought to go from here? To which the cat replied, it depends a great deal on where you want to go, Alice. And Alice replied again, I don't much, I don't care much where I go. And the cat replied, so it doesn't really matter where you go. So eventually you end up in the middle and being nowhere. So I believe that we can still set course as a person driven by our life values. That's phase three. Four, create your way. Basically, I'm going to keep it brief, manifesting making these life values into tangible stuff. Where would you live? What beliefs would you have? What thoughts do you need in order to, to, to kind of to stick to these life values? Uh, how do you need to talk to other people and to yourself? Where would you live? What work would you do? Those kind of stuff. How would your spiritual life, your love relationship look like? Your work, your, your family, you name it big thing so we're gonna map out everything but also yourself as a life adventure phase five all the way we take action now that we know you have to take action so how can we build up things as courage to take the next step how can we ensure that what we do has effect how can we ensure that we do the things that we 
kind of plan on doing. So this step is all about taking action and having the courage and taking that next step. And eventually we get to the last phase, which is make way. Because after we went all the way, you know this feeling, maybe you did a course, you had a beautiful experience, you went on a vacation, you read a book, you had an insight, you name it, that you come back and you're like, oh my God, I've done this, I've read this, I followed this, I've met this person. Try it out, you should try this. What do we do? We wanna give back. And the other way around, it works also that people see it. Sometimes you did this course or maybe you went somewhere and had an experience or you had a beautiful conversation with someone. And after that, they come to you and they say like, hey, you've changed. And they see it and they want to know. They want your information, your meaning, your meaning, everything that you learned. So basically make way means giving back. And I follow this up with this last quote. In service, I give of what I have become. And after that, when we finish this cycle, after make way, there comes a new moment that we say, hmm, I've done this course. What about this one? What about doing this? So we end up going back to phase one, get out of the way, going somewhere. And that's why it's called the never ending journey. Ah, obviously, of course, there's group sessions and the power lies within that. I mean, I provide the program and everything that's included, but obviously sitting together on a bonfire or around the table and sharing the conversations about our lives and what we go through, through these steps is eventually what bonds the people. There's nothing better than connecting from heart to heart to each other through cries, frustration, laughter, you name it, everything that comes with it, talking openly and, ven and vulnerable with each other. Obviously, I'll also be there to do the one-on-one -on -one check ins um, to guide you on the coaching, but also a weekly check-in that we can film so you can really see your progress along the way. So we'll have three moments for a check-in. What people like you experienced, I'm going to go through it very quickly. Maybe you've read a few, met some of beautiful people. Yeah. Die bijblijven omdat ze nieuw zijn en anders en je er iets van leert. En ja, soms heb je ze ook alleen natuurlijk. Maar ik vind het met mensen samen dingen beleven. Voor mij is dat het leven. Het zou niet in één keer leven. She says doing things together is actually what, what life is about, that she wouldn't want to be living alone, but sharing moments, creating memories together, it's what gives meaning to her life. And she just hit the nail uh, on the right spot. This is what we believe as well. Um, so yeah, that's it. Details, uh, the group is uh, size limited to eight. It may be 10, let's see what happens. Uh, duration is obviously 21 days. There's two journeys happening. So one in October and one in November. You can see the dates here, which basically means the 9th of October, you need to arrive at destination, either at the airport or the location. And the 30 will do the checkout. Six till 27, same thing. Arrive on the 6th, at least in Kathmandu. And then the 27th, uh, you're leaving again. The price is... Uh, 2222 um i think it's it's not much especially regarding the, the places that we're visiting and where we're going the reason why is i want to keep this particular journey that's why i say i i want to keep it reasonable and affordable for everyone because i know there's only tracks going out for uh let's say 10 days they're going out for 2400 easily but we're not, obviously, we're here also to, to, to gain money from it, but it hasn't been our purpose. So it's really giving you the chance to go on this beautiful experience. What's included, accommodation, track the permits, the guide, uh, the licenses for entering the park, the park entry fees, the guidance in the process I mentioned before, 
transport, which means you from the airport to location, and also, for instance, from our first spot to Pokhara, taking the bus and the bus back. Uh, physical preparation, all included, gateway shop, discounts, adventures package, which will for sure hit the 160 euros worth of value, 100%. Excluded is the flight, it's quite stable, 650. Keep in check that obviously we're now in the, the big C times, including for us, which means that many airlines, they guarantee a full refund, getting your money back entirely. Please know that also for the flights that um, it, they don't vary that much if you book them later in the season. season. The visa is still left to arrange, but we'll guide you through that. That's like 30 USD. The gear, obviously, you have to get yourself. If there's any item that you don't want to buy but do need on the track on this journey, let us know because we can always rent them out to you. Insurance, obviously, and the food for 10 days. Why we the food for 10 days basically means the food that is not included in the track because we know that some people don't have breakfast, other ones uh, don't have lunch or they eat at different spots and eat different quantities. So we thought like, okay, we're gonna keep this part separate so we can really focus just on where we know for sure we can do it and the rest of everyone is a little bit more able to choose for themselves. Cool. That's it for this part, I believe. I think we're done actually. Tanyabat. Tanyabat means thank you in Nepali. Um, the questions, I hope I answered all the questions along the way. If there's still any questions, please let me know. And hopefully, I don't know. Well, we'll see you there or where we can have contact beforehand. <laughs> One hour of talking this is what it does to you. Uh, thank you for being here. Like, honestly, it, it means a lot to see people joining these types of uh, presentations. And yeah, I hope we can get in touch. I hope to see you and to get to know you. Take care. Namaste.